Well, thank you for tuning in to another segment of the news under the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, which means what? Freedom of the press. Well, here today we're going to be talking about uh, somewhat about uh, two subjects, mainly collective bargaining, uh, police unions and how their collective bargaining actually winds up <laughs> uh, calling into effect uh, abuse, uh, killing of black people. So collective bargaining shouldn't be used to collectively kill people of color. And it is in police unions. So let me start off, though by talking about what happened in Austin last week and what's going to be happening soon. The George Floyd Act, which was uh, brought into existence from local state representative Barbara Hawkins and state representative Symphonia uh, Thompson out of Houston, they brought a number of bills before the Texas for Texas uh, Homeland Security Committee. And I mean, there were dozens and dozens of organizations that came to support uh, the effort. And that effort would, in, uh, all would include, very, very similar to the federal legislation, banning of chokeholds, knees to the neck, uh, that kind of thing. And also, a, uh, one thing we thought was very important was a duty to report. So if you're a police officer and you're watching another police officer m uh, strangle someone to death, uh, that officer is going to have a duty under this law to report him push him off of the other person or do something to intervene to keep that person from being killed by a rogue police officer or racist police officer or whatever the case may be. So that's going to be coming up. Also, uh, it had a, uh, a bill that I was able to testify to um, under the George Floyd Act, but specifically geared towards San Antonio and the Disciplinary Act that the San Antonio Police Officers Association uses to oppress people to commit all kinds of crimes uh, in the community. And I'm not against collective bargaining. I support collective bargaining, but not when it's used to abuse people. And in this case, the San Antonio Police Officers Association has disgraced the term collective bargaining. They have disgraced the term collective bargaining by use of getting police officers off the hook by using technicalities. So the bill would, um, uh, deal with these technicalities. And in the case of Matthew Luckhurst, who is known in San Antonio by many as the dog poop sandwich cop, who, who tried to feed a dog feces sandwich to a homeless man, was let off the hook. Because in the San Antonio police officer's contract, they have a 180 day rule. And that 180 day rule means that from the time the incident took place, uh, 180 days later, if he isn't charged, or his case is not brought up for discipline, then you can't charge him. So it's a statute of limitations. And let me tell you the problem with that. The authorities may not find out about that particular incident until a month, two months after the incident actually occurred. So then you've got 30, 60 days have already passed, and it takes a long time for an investigation to take place. And that's how Matthew Luckers uh, was not fired even after he committed a crime which should have been punishable under the law. He, his case should have actually been uh, uh, sent over to the district attorney for criminal prosecution. It was not. And at the last report, we heard that uh, this officer, he was eventually fired for smearing something that looked like feces on the toilets in the women's restroom. He got fired for that one. Uh, but guess what? The bad news is he wound up working for another police department. And so the danger of him stopping people on city streets is really, really bad. We have officers that have gotten off the hook, bad officers, bad policemen who shouldn't be policemen anymore because they've been protected by a collective bargaining agreement that does not consider that the lives of residents are important. So that's the problem. And the unionization of uh, police officers has been a problem. And we uh, have talked about this. The Washington Post had a great article on the unionization emboldens uh, police officers to commit violent offenses. And it says, I'll read from it, quote, a recent University of Chicago working paper found that violent misconduct amongst sheriff officers increased about 40 percent after a state Supreme Court ruling allowed the officers to unionize. The incidents examined in this paper are among the most serious type of violent misconduct, including sexual assault and excessive force. 
It's worth noting the baseline numbers of these types of incidents are very low, such that the 40% increase translates roughly into one additional violent incident per officer's office every five years. So certain union negotiated contract provisions like the one we have in San Antonio, including time limits on misconduct investigations, expungement of bad behavior records, mechanisms allowing officers to challenge the disciplinary findings, or in the case of San Antonio, they don't even have to show up for the civilian review of that complaint. Make it more difficult to detect and punish officers who abuse their position. And this is why 26,000 signatures were gathered to place the, on the ballot a May 1st election that would remove the power of the San Antonio Police Officers Association and their power to protect criminal police officers. So very, very important. So according to the article, to make a long story short, unionization may increase solidarity among the officers and thereby strengthen a code of silence that impedes the detection of misconduct. In San Antonio, in the case of uh, Mr. Zimwalt, uh, who was killed on the city's west, uh, west side, uh, it was quoted in one report that officers stood around asking the question to each other, are y'all okay with this? Are y'all okay with this? And that's typical of, uh, of police who are trying to make sure that no other police officer is going to report them for misconduct. So this is how the, this little trick is done. So very, very important. So these late, lengthy appeals processes may make it more difficult to fire bad cops. And certainly we've seen that. We've seen one officer, Tim Garcia, actually call a black man the N-word multiple, multiple times. So the San Antonio Police Officers Association actually was able to get arbitration for this officer. And the arbitrator had to be a racist himself simply because he said that using the N-word was not an issue uh, 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 that someone ought to be fired for. Keep in mind, this cop that used the N-word, oh my God, he's still running around San Antonio making our streets unsafe. And this is why many people say that collective bargaining agreement must be done away with, decertified, to make a long story short. Uh, unionized police officers are more likely to kill civilians, particularly non-white people people of color, black people, brown people. Uh, economist Bob uh, Gissau uh, recently previewed his research or uh, previewed or his research examining the relationship between unionization and police killing of citizens. While provisional, um, his initial results suggest the police unionization happening in the 1950s. By the way, that was the time of Jim Crow and the 1980s led to about 60 to 70 additional civilians killed by police each year. So having a police association increases the number of people, uh, civilians that are killed by rogue criminal police officers that should be fired and stay fired. The overwhelming majority of the uh, civilians that they were killed during these, this period were pr principally non-white, black, brown, people of color. Um, so this is uh, one thing. Uh, also, uh, reports from the Attorney General's uh, office, the Texas Attorney General, indicate that, uh, gosh, dozens of people have been killed in San Antonio who are unarmed. People without a brick, without a knife, without a, a stick, without anything, without a gun, killed. Horrendous number. Killed. Unarmed. Many of them shot in the back. So this Police Officers Association has this very serious, serious problem. And, and, and in some cases, all they can do is get back the blue vigilantes to post ugly comments on YouTube videos and in other places, uh, which we pay no attention to, by the way, because the reporting has to continue about this bad, bad conduct. I, I do need to report that uh, in the organized labor movement, many unions are expelling a police association from their ranks. The largest labor group in Seattle has expelled the city's police union, saying um, the guild representing officers have failed to address racism uh, within their ranks, according to a PBS NewsHour report. The vote Wednesday night, uh, which took place uh, re recently, just not too long ago, uh, removed the police union from the AFL-CIO. And that's why um, the local AFL-CIO should not accept their uh, petition if they were, were to petition. And by the way, 
the Police Officers Association has never been a part of the AFL-CIO, so, uh, and, and many people hope they don't, because they ought to not be allowed to be in there until they address the 180-day statute of limitations to the address uh, calling black people the N-word and allowing those officers to get off the hook. That's not collective bargaining. That's a violation of human rights. So allowing police unions to violate human rights and then calling it uh, collective bargaining, police associations are not just like any other union. They're totally different because they interface between the public right, and themselves, and that interface has to do with life and death. Teachers don't interfa interface with the public in terms of life or death. Right? The, another group that interfaces with the public in terms of life or de death are doctors. And guess what? If they cut off your leg by mistake, they will be held accountable. So when there's an interface between life and death, like the police have, there ought to be accountability, and the San Antonio Police Department has almost zero accountability because of their collective bargaining agreement. So this is what's happening across the country. Police unions, local AFL-CIOs, uh, in some cases, are removing uh, police associations from their membership because they are concerned about police brutality. Uh, Lowell Peterson, executive director of the Writers Guild, adopted a resolution calling on the AFL-CIO to disassociate itself from the International Union of Police Associations, the F uh, Federation's police union affiliate. There's definitely a lot of talk in the labor movement about why is this happening and what can, uh, as, what can we do as unions do about it. I am a member of the uh, Communication Workers of America. I support collective bargaining, but communication workers are not killing people. Communication workers are not out there on the front line interfacing in a life or death situation, and that's why police unions are totally different from any other union, and we need to be mindful of the fact uh, that they ought to not be part of the AFL-CIO. Uh, the Martin Luther King County Labor Council um, uh, has been fighting for this also, and the Chicago School Board uh, voted down a similar measure to cancel a $33 million contract with city police uh, that was backed by the Chicago Teachers Union as protests uh, took place. That Martin Luther King Labor Council, a body of labor organizations representing 100,000 workers in the Seattle area, voted to expel the Seattle Police Officers Guild after, earlier this month. Association of Flight Attendants, right? The people that serve you the drinks and the food on the airlines, which sits on the AFL-CIO's Executive Council, passed a resolution demanding that police unions embrace change, or guess what? Removed from the labor movement. So this is very, very important. I might add that Officer Shaven, who's in, on trial right now, for killing George Floyd has been protected by their union as another example of collective bargaining is the wrong thing for police officers to have because they're beating us over the head with their collective bargain, uh, bargaining agreement. Um, so no contract should be rammed down the throat of a city. Uh, even though some cities sign it, if they did sign a contract, they made a horrible mistake. So you can blame the city and the union for pushing these ideas forward. So these are reports that come through Politico, uh, PBS, uh, and of course the Washington Post, very which uh, are all important. Well, and one last punch, San Antonio police, or how police unions become such powerful opponents to reform, as an article carried out in the New York Times, because they, they aggressively protect the rights of members accused of misconduct, often in arbitration hearings that they have battle to keep behind closed doors, and they've also been remarkably effective in fending off broader change, using their political clout and influence to derail efforts to increase accountability. So, we know that these things are problematic in the city of San Antonio, and that's why uh, citizens are going to the polls uh, for Proposition B, and uh, in my opinion, under the First Amendment, and only representing myself, well, we should vote yes for this, uh, because we have a police association that's totally, totally out of control. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be talking about this much more later on as we proceed. Thank you. <laughs>